ማሬትን አሰብሁ ቀድራታት ክልምለም Education has an important function both in the civilian and the military fields. Thus in periods of ceasefire, morning hours are used for education purposes even in the trenches. Everywhere in the EPLF controlled areas of Eritrea, we found young people busy acquiring new knowledge. The teaching of politics and history is very important. But there are also lessons in arithmetic, mathematics, language subjects and practical subjects. The intention is to make everybody better prepared to manage on his own. The improved level of education partly explains the high standard of morale and motivation we found among the fighters, young men and women who lead a tough and hard-bitten life in trenches and underground bunkers, month after month, even year after year. <laughs> All available resources are used for useful purposes. These are materials from Russian ammunition boxes which are being remade into simple but serviceable furniture for use in the field. It is an unquestionable fact that new volunteers arrive at the EPLF camps every single day, determined on fighting the Ethiopians. These recruits at one of the numerous training camps are having a bonfire feast with a little local beer. The dancing and the singing, the drums and the bonfire build a fascinating, intense atmosphere in the dark of the night. At this time of the night, they feel safe from enemy planes. They sing about fighting, about blood, and about victory. But tonight is also the time of executivity behind the front, as the Ethiopian planes do not master the night. Good luck. Ha, 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 Now questions. Do you have any questions? <laughs> in 1961, during the time of the Federation, people went to the United Nations and made some demands on behalf of the Eritrean people. Why didn't they give them an answer? 
አሎም ዘሎ ተገዳስነት the demand was a simple demand for self government self administration what answer did the united nations give when these demands were made the member states of the united nations protect their own interests and they are not going to care for the eritrean people all they are worried about is exploiting resources and making economic benefits for themselves those who were running the federation from the Eritrean side, were they consulting the people in the countryside? Can you tell us whether they were consulting or not? I think they were not consulting the Eritrean people. What they did was discuss it between themselves and ally themselves with the feudal lords. But the people in the countryside were not consulted. They had no role whatsoever, and the reason why Eritrean people could not participate was because they did not know. They were not consulted. If you look at the role of the masses in the countryside, it's only after the EPLF came that its role was assured. The farmer had no role whatsoever. Nobody ever consulted them. Even their existence was not recognized. Those who had property and were rich discussed between themselves what would be most convenient and expedient for them. But even for their own purposes, they failed in their intentions. Any other questions? Please ask. In the olden times, whoever was the government or the leader of the government did not consult the peasants. Only the rich, only the people with property were consulted. The people were never consulted. Only now are the rights of the mass of Eritreans being respected. As far as the Federation is concerned, we did not even know of its existence. It's only after the EPLF came with its political education that we know and that we understand. And now we are struggling and we are thinking. <laughs> ነበር <laughs> Young people in many developing countries are often viewed as either victims of poverty, in need of care or menaces to society that must be tamed. Eritrea's youth seriously challenge this view and much of this is due to a well-designed national service program that is part of a comprehensive youth development strategy. Having inherited a country in ruins, Eritrea's development program was and remains quite extensive and the human resource required to implement it is as massive as the program itself. 
we have. The pressing question then became what better way to meet this human resource need than by harnessing the country's own young and energetic population group. Eritrea's National Service Program is designed to train, empower and actively engage young Eritreans in the building of their nation. The argument for the program is that if properly trained and supported, the youth of Eritrea can become an indispensable and integral part of development and nation building. An effective youth development strategy helps young people appreciate and realize their capacity and channels their resourcefulness and energy into the reconstruction and development of the country. In Eritrea's case, National service is designed to enable the youth to become active citizens and participants in the building of their nation. The priority areas for service are often aligned with and determined in relation to the national development priorities identified by government. As such, national service aims to equip young people with the necessary life coping skills to foster their personal and career development while at the same time enhancing their contribution to community and national development at large. The facility is to support the college, their graduates, their students for training, hands-on vocational training, research projects, product development, but not only to train and be useful for graduates but also for farmers, for dairy entrepreneurs uh, in the entire country of Eritrea. Some of the major sectors that can benefit from national service are education. The creation of a knowledge society where every person is an owner of the development process is perhaps best appreciated by surveying Eritrea's heavy investment in education. The, the government of Eritrea has taken seriously the idea for the growth of the economy constant upgrading, the constant reskilling of staff, reskilling of Eritreans, whether it's a mid-level government manager, whether it's in the commercial sector, whether it's in the private sector. Education, especially higher education, which includes vocational and technical training, is at the core of the development process. That the quality is at a higher standard and of course there can be always room for improvement, it's a new college, but I think the, uh, these graduates are really top-notch graduates. In place of one university in the capital city, which could only accommodate relatively small number of students at a time and which limited the scope of practical research and study, today there are seven institutions of higher learning that are regionally and strategically distributed according to the fields of study that they offer. These institutions have guaranteed access to a far larger number of students than was previously possible. Education is free for all from primary all the way to university. Many who excel and qualify are even sent abroad, fully financed by the government, to pursue further education in an effort to build the human capacity of the country. Developing the human resource capital is a major priority for the government of Eritrea. As such, capacity building and training, as well as knowledge and technology transfer, is built into virtually every sector, including one of the newest sectors in the country, mining. <laughs> 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 